This is Prophetic Insights. I'm Hilary Henriquez. I'm Andrew Henriquez. Second Timothy chapter three, verses one through five tells us the condition of God's professed people just before he comes. This condition, sadly and unfortunately, is prevalent in our churches today. The Palm Springs Seventh-day Adventist Church in Palm Springs, California, recently held their annual Christmas concert. They held it on Sabbath, December 19th, 2015. Spearheaded by senior pastor Michael Leno, they invited the Palm Springs Gay Men's Chorus to perform. Now, you said that this was done on the Sabbath. We want to emphasize that. And notice that word gay in the title of this men's chorus, which simply means then the senior pastor, Michael Leno, of the church Palm Springs, Seventh-day Adventist Church, along with the officers, knew that this choir was a gay men's chorus, Palm Springs Gay Men's Chorus. And this report was published on two prominent websites, SDA Kinship and Adventist Today. And I would like for us now to focus on the words from this report. A few years ago, had someone wanted to bet me that the Palm Springs Adventist Church would play host to the Palm Springs Gay Men's Chorus at our annual Christmas fete, I might have been willing to take that bet if I were a betting man. Our Palm Springs Church has been especially welcoming of gays and lesbians. Now, this next part I'm about to read indicates that the pastor, as you just said, that the pastor and the officers did indeed know that this chorus that they were inviting were homosexual men. And this, um, the author of the article is actually a member. And this part that we're going to read now is a dialogue between himself and senior pastor Michael Leno. It reads, he and I had been talking about recruiting a chorus of men for the Christmas event. And I suggested, only half seriously, that we enlist the services of the Palm Springs Gay Men's Chorus. Pastor Michael's eyes lit up and he said, that would be great. Would you be willing to ask them? I told him that I would do my best. This is an abomination. This is way off course for a Seventh-day Adventist church on the Sabbath, especially to be inviting an all gay men's choir to come and minister in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. All throughout scripture, we see that it was the consecrated Levites, the priests who were appointed as singers, ministers in the sanctuary. And God does not change his word then should be applied today. Let's take a look at the statement in 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and verse number 12 to confirm this point. Also, the Levites, which were the singers, all of them, of Asaph, of Heman, of Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen. And not only does that scripture confirm, but when we look in the account of Elijah, we see that ancient Israel under King Ahab and the others, the elders, that they had allowed men who were practicing the sins of the grove. And the sins of the grove pointed to sodomy, the same sins of the LGBT community today. Let's turn to 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18. And if you remember now on Mount Carmel, we see the prophets of Baal, the prophets of the grove. And I'm going to show you from scripture. The prophets of the grove were men who were practicing the sins of the LGBT community. They were sodomites. They were homosexuals. And on Mount Carmel, these were the men who were leading out in worship, dancing, singing, and leaping on the altar. And after Elijah under God's inspiration and power, brought about revival and reformation, God instructed Elijah to overthrow 
the prophets of Baal, the prophets of the grove. First Kings chapter 18. And look with me here at verse number 19. It says, Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel upon Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the grove, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. And verse 24 through verse number 29, it says they were dancing, leaping on the altar. And in verse number 40, the Bible says, And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, even those of the grove, and let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. So when we see the, the Seventh-day Adventist church, Palm Springs Seventh-day Adventist, under the leadership of Michael Leno, bringing in, Palm Springs gay men's chorus. This is an abomination for bringing them in. And secondly, to allow them to minister, to sing in the sanctuary on the Sabbath. Look with me at 2 Kings chapter 23. In 2 Kings chapter 23, we see a second account that this is uh, an abomination in the sight of God. Now this is uh, King Josiah who brought about revival and reformation in Israel. Let's focus on verse number five and verse number seven. It says, and he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burn incense unto Baal. So these were the leaders who allowed these men who were not even Judeans, not even Israelites, not Hebrews. They went to the world, the pagans, and brought in these men, ordained them to minister in the sanctuary. But God raised up King Josiah to bring about revival and reformation. And verse number 7 says, And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the woman wove hangings for the grove. The prophets of the grove were sodomites. Write down 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 23, and verse number 24, the prophets of the grove were sodomites. So what we see going on in this Seventh-day Adventist church, it's an abomination to say the least. And I believe this is not an isolated issue. Other churches are doing likewise. Yes, it's, it's a systemic problem. And if we only realize uh, the sacred purpose of music and the ministry of music, the music is, you're conveying a message. You're conveying the gospel message through music. So if your life has not been touched by the gospel, if you're still admitting that uh, you're a sinner and you cannot change or have no desire to change, what message are you going to convey to the people? What gospel message can you bring? What kind of ministry can you render? What kind of spirit will you be uh, emitting to the people that are listening to you? But you know, the Palm Springs Seventh-day Adventist Church prides themselves on being a welcoming church. And let me reread the statement that is actually in the first paragraph of this article that appeared on Adventist Today and SDA Kinship. It says our Palm Springs church has been especially welcoming of gays and lesbians. Now, is there anything wrong with being welcoming of, of sinners of any sort, gays, lesbians, adulterers, murderers? No, we welcome them in so that they can be taught how to be converted so that they can be educated on how it is that they can achieve victory not welcome them in to minister, not welcome them in to lead out in worship, not welcome them in to sing to our people. But many um, in the LGB community and many sympathizers, they use this as an excuse and say, well, Jesus was welcoming of sinners of all types. And yes, he was. That is absolutely true. Jesus is welcoming. And so should we be. However, their idea, their concept of welcoming is to put people in as ministers and also officers in the church. No, when Jesus welcomed these people, he sat with them and he educated them. He taught them how they could be delivered from their unclean spirits. Christ encountered people that dealt with unclean spirits of all sorts. 
you know, immorality, licentiousness, even uh, people that struggled with sexual orientation and I, their identity, you know, but he didn't send them out to minister in their sinful state. It's, he cleaned them up. It's like the account of Isaiah. When Isaiah saw the Lord and Isaiah began to examine himself, he cried out, woe is me for I am undone. Yes. And then it says, after Isaiah's sins were cleansed, he was converted. It was at that time the question came now, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? In other words, Isaiah was not in a condition to be a minister for God until he was converted. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing in this report, Hillary, is that there is not even a subtle undertone. It is implied that Seventh-day Adventists need to change their doctrines in order to facilitate the acceptance of people who are openly practicing the abominations, the sins of the LGBT community. I want to read this statement from the same report. It says, as a consequence of Adventists' unwillingness to change with the times, many gay Adventists have felt unwelcome. While the December 19th appearance of the Palm Springs Gay Men's Chorus at our Palm Springs Adventist Church did not abrogate Adventist doctrine respecting homosexuality. It did, in fact, mark a very significant step in welcoming members of the LGBTI community. And that is startling to say the least. And what comes to my mind is this prominent potent statement in the book Great Controversy, page 384, which in essence it says that the children, those in the last days of our pioneers, in order to win souls, quote unquote, in order to do evangelism, they will lower God's standards of truth. But what will happen? The church will be filled with people who are pagan, pagan still. Let's read this statement. Great Controversy, page 384. To secure converts, the exalted standard of the Christian faith was lowered. And as a result, a pagan flood flowing into the church carried with it its customs, practices, and idols. As the Christian religion secured the favor and support of secular rulers, it was nominally accepted by multitudes. But while in appearance, Christians, many remained in substance pagans, especially worshiping in secret their idols. Has not the same process been repeated in nearly every church calling itself Protestant? And uh, Hillary, the devil is so subtle. And of course, we know that. And he, what he wants is that the majority, the whole Seventh-day Adventist body of believers, he wants them to openly accept the abomination, the sins of the LGBT community. Why? He knows history that if God's people accept these sins in their midst, God's presence will be removed. You can look back, for example, at the account of Eli, Hophni, and Phineas, when the words rang out, Ichabod, the glory is departed. And what were the sins of the priests, the leaders, Hophni, Phineas, and Eli? They were committing similar sins that presently are, are being carried out in the LGBTI community. It's there. Notice now. But Satan knows. He cannot work from the top down because he knows that there might be a loud outcry. What are we doing, leaders? So what he's now doing, he's working at the grassroots level. He's sowing his noxious, poisonous seeds among the local Seventh-day Adventist churches. He knows if the majority of the local Seventh-day Adventist members accept the sinful lifestyle practices of the LGBTI community, he knows then 
that they will vote for these things to be the norm in the church. Correct. And as the scripture says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So as you rightly said, this is not an isolated incident. It, it has uh, reverberations throughout the denomination. And, you know, one of the, these ways that he's sowing his noxious seeds is through love. This false concept of love, which is diminishing the standards, nullifying the commandments of God and just crying love mercy. Well, there's no standards. There's no accountability. Nothing. Great Controversy, page 588, says that that is spiritualism that puts love above the law. And it also calls it love sick sentimentalism. But the Bible is clear in Psalm 85, verse 10, that love and mercy must be blended with truth and righteousness. There has to be a blend. How can we show our love to God without obedience to his commandments? That's John 14, 15. Amen. And it's, it's very important that we focus on that statement you quoted. Great Controversy, page 558. It's lovesick sentimentalism. Just love, just mercy. Love them in the church. Yes, even though we must be careful, must be careful of who we bring in. All right. However, when they come in, not to bring them in as members, baptize them when they're unconverted and give them an office. Give Because remember now, even as singers, they are officers. They're ministers. Ministers sure. in the church. Sure. Notice now, I'm wondering if that 21-page document that was compiled, written, and published by the Biblical Research Institute, Andrews University, Lake Union Conference, and the, the NAD has anything to do with this movement. A few days ago, we spoke about the transgender woman there in California. What's going on in California, Hillary? And now we're seeing this in Palm Springs Seventh-day Adventist Church. I want to tell you something. That 21-page document has something to do with this LGBT movement within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So what now should we do? I've been saying we must hold our leaders accountable. We must hold senior pastor Michael Leno accountable. Yes. We must hold Ricardo Graham, who I believe is, is the union conference president in California, accountable. We must hold the, the, the secretary, hold our leaders accountable. Yes. But what I'm seeing here is the common people to some extent are not saying anything. It seems to me that some of them agree and love it. They love it so. And what I also see is that the leaders themselves would not do anything to change it because most of them already know these things are happening, right. Hillary. And have not said anything publicly. These things are not hidden. These things are public. They're publicizing it on, you know, websites. They're, they're making videos and so forth. And there has been no public statement about it. So now, if we go to them, what's going to happen? Nothing. The, the pastor may get a slap on the wrist and that's it. Nothing else. They may move him to another location, but the same leaven of sin it's is in the churches. Right, right. right. So what needs to be done? I believe a change must take place. And the change is not going to take place in the leadership. Inspiration says that the regular lines, the conference work, will prove a failure and a sneer. And we see it all throughout scripture. Revival and reformation in the days of Christ's earth and ministry did not come through the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the elders, and the doctors of the law. It came through the common people. John it, the came, Baptist. it came through Amen. John the Baptist. It came through the disciples. Right. It came through the apostles. And as it was then, so it is in these last days. So we will have to do, Safe to Serve International, what we will have to do is begin to work also at the grassroots level. Meet the sincere Seventh-day Adventists. Study with them. Pray with them in their homes. If we have the means, the resources, open up lighthouses, 
centers where people can come and study God's word. We can train them, teach them how to commune with Jesus, how to get victory over sin, Amen. what the gospel is, what heart preparation is, and then we can send them out to be missionaries for Jesus Christ in these last days. And if any person who is struggling with the sins of the LGBT community, we come in contact with them, we can also teach that person and teach another how to get victory Amen. and not just say, have love, for them show them mercy without standards that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ and if we profess to love Jesus we must have a deep desire to reach souls and to help them where they are that's absolutely correct and you know for the longest time we've been hearing this cry for revival and reformation in the church let's let's pray for a revival pray at 7 a.m pray at 7 p.m let's get on our knees and let's pray for a revival let's pray for the outpouring of the holy spirit in the seventh day adventist denomination but while they're urging members to pray and i believe some are faithfully praying you know and they're asking god and seeking god for revival and reformation yet there can be no revival unless there is reformation. And what do I mean by that? There can be no outpouring of the Holy Spirit while sins, blatant sins, open apostasy is left unchecked. You cannot just pray for the Holy Spirit while overlooking and turning a blind eye to the, the obvious sins that are taking place denominationally. And that's what's happening. We need to work in accordance with our prayer. If we're praying for revival and reformation, what are we doing to affect that change? And I, I just think of Joshua, you know, when they were defeated by AI because Amen. there was a uh, yeah, because Achan had held on to this Babylonish garment. He held on to, to sin, of Babylon. you know, to Babylon. Amen. And Joshua was seeking the Lord. Lord, what happened? What's going on? He fell on his face. Well, the Lord told Joshua in Joshua 7, Joshua, get up. You've been crying to me long enough. You need to go and search out the sin and you need to rid the sin from the camp. That's what our leaders need to do. Now, I, I strongly believe one of the great reasons why the abominations of the LGBTI community are prevalent in our churches and we allow it, we sympathize with it, and we just say, bring them in, love them, baptize them in the same lifestyle. We do not know how to help the people because we have accepted a false gospel. Our gospel is perverted. But those who have been given that true gospel, heart conversion, they know how to help those who are struggling with deep-seated sinful tendencies. Mm -hmm. They know how to help them. And that's why I believe God has raised up Safe to Serve Local and Safe to Serve International. This year, 2016, is the year for aggressive evangelism. We may have to go among the lepers, among those who cry unclean, unclean, unclean. Like Jesus, if we are connected to the source of strength and power, we can bring healing Amen. to their souls, body, and spirit. Amen.